Hello, it's me, Brian. Trying to get the lighting set right. Let's see, let's try that one. How's that look? That's pretty good. Okay, Ramsey. Ramsey Martin. Good nice morning, young man. <laughs> Thank you, you know. Got a job, that's good. That's good. Keep keep your job, don't quit. <laughs> right, most of the time when I was home, this, I always had a job. Yeah, they keep your job is good. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyways. Bando Mansion. <laughs> Everybody's favorite place. Alright, let's see. Let me get my little magic ledger book out right here. Bando Mansion. Okay, number one. Alright, disclaimer. Alright, when you are entering into an abandoned building or a property, a house, there's an apartment buildings, condos, it doesn't matter, a construction site that's still under construction, Right? And saying anything that's posted, no trespassing, violators will be prosecuted and has a statute number. Right? You know what I'm saying? Red and white sign. That, those are legit. Right? Um, right? You are in a very gray area right here between criminal trespassing, right? Regular trespassing and getting away with it. <laughs> right? Now, be mindful. If you're caught there, you see them by either the popo, right, or the owner, there is potential, you know, for, you know, right, consequences, right, and all the way up including jail, right, so be mindful of where you're at and what you're doing, you understand, so, number one, you got to scout out wherever it is, you said you had a building, you know, that you were looking at, right, well, then, then pay attention, <laughs> right, if you're looking at this building, you, then you, you, you have a couple of different spots where you can sit and you can watch. Watch the building for a couple of three, four days in a row. Make sure there is absolutely no activity at this building. Right? While you're doing that, you know what I'm saying? You can walk by once or twice, you're standing around the back side or the front side, whichever side that you can't see from your vantage point, and make sure that there is nothing chained up or locked. You know what I'm saying? And you want to look for the aforementioned signs. No trespassing. You know what I'm saying? Right? Once 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 you know the layout of the building, right, and you know all of the all of the exits and all of the you know access points, you know what I'm saying, and all of the external viewing points, you know what I'm saying? You know, just you gotta think about it just like the cops, you know what I'm saying, setting up for you know surveillance, right? You know, because because the neighbors around you, if there's any neighbors, if 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 this is, you know, like a building that's in the middle of town, you know what I'm saying, in the main district, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of business around it, a lot of business, a lot of hustle, you know what I'm saying, the neighbors know that this building's empty. If they see any activity, they're going to call Popo, right, you know what I'm saying. If it's out some outside, farther out of town, you know what I'm saying, and you get a little industrial park and industrial areas in this area, it's far, you know, it's set off by itself and it's around, try to find the access point from around behind it where nobody can see you. Right? That's always the best bet, you know, Sam? Right? You you want to approach a bando mansion, especially a new one, one that you're starting yourself. You want to approach it like a stealth camping mission. You want to scout it all out. You want to lay it all out. You want to know what's going on. You know, Sam? That's why you want to spend a number of days in a row watching it for a few hours every day. And, and switch that up a day and night. So you know if there is any activity, if there's any other human beings already there, it blows your whole trip. Right? That's the signal. That's number one. Number one right there for abandoned mansion. If you're coming across an abandoned mansion that's already occupied by various peoples, you know what I'm saying? I've already made videos concerning, you know, how to deal with that and how to do, you know, how, how to work your way in with people in an abandoned mansion, you know what I'm saying? I'll post a link, you know what I'm saying, in the description of this video, right, for a couple of those videos so that you get a better understanding of what I'm telling you here, right? Now. Number two, right? Keep your presence to a minimum, right? What I mean by that is, is in the very beginning until you get established and you know that you are secure and that you know that nobody's going to bother you, 
You know what I'm saying? Keep your presence to a minimum. Your backpack, a little bit, a little bit of gear, this, that, whatever, whatever you need. You know what I'm saying? If you plan on using this place to stash your stuff, I highly advise you to find a little hidey hole somewhere in the building. This is a perfect building for a band of matching. Find you a little hidey hole somewhere where you can stash your shit during the daytime. You can come back to it at night. Or you can leave it there at night and you can come back to it in the daytime. However you want to do it. Right? Try to keep the trash and all that bullshit down to, you know, like zero. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you bring it in, take it out with you the next morning. Right? Any evidence, even with the inside the building, because if other people get, get nosy or they start to suspect something, they're going to come in and they're going to look around. If there's any evidence of, you know, of, of current habitation, they're going to call it popo. <laughs> Keep it to a minimum. Just bare essentials what you need until you get established. Alright? That leads us to number three. Entering and exiting. You want to keep regular scheduled hours for this point, right? You should have already figured out that the best time to enter is sometime around dusk. You know what I'm saying? When, 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 when most of the neighborhood or the activity in the on the street, you know what I'm saying, is, is at its most, you know, most weakest point. The sun's going down, people are making dinner, you know what I'm saying? When people are getting off work, this is not everything, they're not really paying attention, you slip right in, boom. Right? In the morning time, you need to be up on the spot out. Right? Regular. Right? At clockwork. Wake up, you know, calculate it this way. About an hour before everybody else either starts to show up at work, or, you know what I'm saying, or, or anything activity starts to happen during the daytime in the street. Gone. If anybody sees you, they're going to be curious. They're going to watch you. They're going to watch for you. So you got to be mindful. You got to look around. You got to pay attention when you're coming and going. Regular hours. And say, find your own time. All right, let's see. Where else does I got? Let's see. Okay. Police. Nine times out of ten, the police is looking at you in one way. That you are a homeless, scandalous bastard, probably a drug addict or an alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're doing drugs and stuff in there if they see you or if somebody reports you. Right, you know what I'm saying? If they if, if if you run into the police, your best defense is one, tell the truth. Two, give them your ID. Three, cooperate with whatever they want to know. Tell them the truth. Why are there? It's a bad no mansion, bro. This is my camp. You're saying you don't want me to be here, I'll go. Fine. If they threaten you with you know with civil action or tickets or anything, do not put up a fight. Because that will lead you to, to resisting arrest, and that because that's what they're itching for. They're itching for them to put a resisting arrest, put a beep on you so that they can just scalp you up, take you away. That's police. It doesn't matter where you're at. This is America, right? The police are in charge of the streets. Yeah, there's a lot of criminal activity. Yeah, there's a lot of homeless people. Yeah, there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's prostitution. Yes, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? But they control the homeless people on the streets, no matter where you're at. Unless you're in Phoenix and you live out there by Cass in Chet City where there's a thousand people. <laughs> or in San Francisco or, you know, or Portland. You know what I'm or, or you're lucky and you live in an abandoned somewhere in Detroit, a 50 story building. Right? The cops don't care. But any other major city, especially out here in the West, they're getting mean, they're getting tough, they're getting rid of people. How do they do it? You know it. Jail. That leads us to the owners. Now, some owners are, are, are pretty cool people, right? They understand the situation. They know that their building is sitting here empty and nothing is, you know, they're not getting anything out of it and they're just paying the taxes on it. They know it. But they also know this, that any more damage that occurs to that building is costing them money and insurance, right? So, right, if, if, if you bump into an owner or if an owner catches you, you need to be very respectful of this individual because you got a 50-50 chance right now of getting, of being able to stay right where you're at. And you might move up and he might, you know, offer you a little bit of something, something to keep track of your shit. Respectful, right? Do not be just right off the top and you're, ah, this is my, I'm homeless. They don't want to hear that. They already know. They got two eyes. They can see you. Right? Those owners that are steadfast, you know what I'm saying, letter of the law type people, right? You, you pick up your shit, you walk away, you don't come back. Right? Because because as soon as you leave, they're, guess what? Cell phone. Who? Popo. Now, on the other hand, some owners, you know what I'm saying, 
right, are a little bit more lenient than others, depending on the situations that they catch you in. You know what I'm saying? Or the way that you approach them. Right? What I used to do is whenever I found a cool little spot and I knew somebody owned it, you know what I'm saying? I'd wait around until I found it, I figured out who they were, and then I would approach them and say, hey, look, bro, I got a, can we make a little deal here? I mean, I, you know, I, I got me a little safety spot right here around the back of the corner, blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? I watch your shit, you take care of me, you know, so I take care of you, nobody come around. And then I pick up all the trash and make sure the dumpster guy gets here on time, blah, 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 right? And sometimes they will go along with you. Right? But that leads me into this one. <laughs> the more people that know about this place, the higher the risk of getting in trouble is. Right? Because there's bound to be wild ass streeties who are going to come over to your mansion. You know what I'm saying? party it up all night. You know what I'm saying? You make all kind of ruckus and leave all kind of trash. It's going to happen. You bring more than yourself to this place or, or a trusted associate, it's going to happen. Right? That's what owners and people that, that, you know, property owners and stuff, that's their biggest fear. Right? It's that your place gets trashed. Right? And then, and, and the insurance won't pay for it because there was a bunch of homeless people that did it. Alright? Now. 19, huh? <laughs> Good luck, young man. Right? You are in for one way or another an adventure across the wide expanse. You know what I'm saying? If, if you keep the right mindset and, and you keep the right, you know, you keep the right stuff going for you, right? You know what I'm saying? And you don't let people abuse you and you don't let them take advantage of you, right? You know what I'm saying? Your name's not Mark. Your name is Ramsey. You know what I'm saying? Right? Gain from the experiences that you have, right? Old Sufi wisdom here, right? Life is a gift. You know what I'm saying? Right? The way you experience the journey of your gift is the value of it. You know what I'm saying? You'll figure that out along the way. You know what I'm saying? Right? This is me, Brian. Please like and subscribe and share this video if you think other newbies and other homeless people need to know a little bit more about what they're getting into. Thank you.